So good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wake Up Newport. I'm Alberto Sandoval, Senior Director of Community and Government Relations at UC Irvine. Uh, welcome to this morning's program because we've got a wonderful speaker. Uh, but before we get to our speaker, uh, we're going to hear from our illustrious leader, Steve Rosensky. Thank you, Alberto. Good morning. Yes, I am Steve Rosansky, President and CEO of the Newport Beach Chamber of Commerce, and welcome to our April edition of Wake Up Newport. we got a great speaker, probably one of my favorite speakers. He's been here, what, at least once, eight times, okay. <laughs> and uh, so you're in for a treat. I always enjoy uh, hearing him talk and his wonderful accent. I'm going to, I was telling him I'm going to Italy myself um, in June, so I was hitting him up for some travel tips. In any event, uh, I always like to introduce some of the dignitaries that are with us this morning. So first off, we'll start off with uh, my former colleague, Keith Curry, former mayor, Newport Beach. Good morning, Keith. With us from the uh, Library Board of Trustees, the chair, Paul Watkins, back there. Are we going to get a library lecture hall? We are? Okay. I'm, I, w I want to book into that, you know, at some point. Right here. What? Well, we have our own lecture to this morning, but we want a hall over there. Anyway, Dorothy Larson, Board of uh, Library Trustees, or Foundation, Foundation, sorry, Foundation, yeah. I even, I knew that. Pierre Swan, Irvine Ranch Water District. Good morning, Pierre. How's the water in Irvine this morning? Coming out of the tap okay? Everything's good? Okay. Chris Delfs, our board chair, my boss back there. Chris. And of course, our special guest this morning, the DECA Club from Harbor High School, and Sheridan Hurst, their fearless leader. So um, I think that covers it. If I forgot somebody, sorry, raise your hand. <laughs> Who? Oh, my, oh, pff. duh, I'm in trouble now. My sister, Robin Grant, Newport Beach City Council. <laughs> I, she's, I just think of her as my sister, but she is, a, she is an official councilwoman now. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Alberto, and we'll have some closing remarks at the end. So and, you know, strap in and enjoy yourself. Thank you. All right. So our wonderful speaker was inaugurated in 2016 uh, as Chapman University's 13th president. Previously, Dr. Shrupa held the position of chancellor at Chapman University for nine years. Dr. Strupa joined Chapman in 2016 as provost, responsible for creating and implementing academic priorities for the university and for the allocation of resources to support those priorities. Let me tell you, that's a real hard job. In 2007, with the addition of further leadership responsibilities, he was appointed as Chapman's first chancellor. Dr. Strupa came to Chapman University from George Mason University, my wife's uh, an alumna, where he served as director uh, of the Center for Applications in Mathematics, as chair of the Department of Mathematical Sciences, and as associate dean for graduate studies. In 1997, he was selected as dean of George Mason's College of Arts and Sciences. Prior to his tenure at George Mason, Dr. Strupa held positions at University of Milano, the, I practice, practice, practice this, Scuola Normale Superiore, is that good? <laughs> and the University of Calabria. Dr. Strupa earned his laurea in mathematics from the University of Milan and received his doctorate in mathematics from the University of Maryland College Park. In recognition of his work, he has been awarded the Bartolozzi Prize from the Italian Mathematical Union and the Matsume Medal from the Matsume International Foundation of Tokyo. In 2019, Dr. Strupa was granted the Donald Bren Presidential Chair in Mathematics. You see, I know Mr. Bren. The chair previously titled the Donald Bren Distinguished Chair in Business and Economics was previously held by President Emeritus Jim Doty. Dr. Strupa is the author of more than 200 reference publications, and he is the editor of several volumes and has edited or co-authored more than 10 books. Please join me in welcoming President Daniele Strupa. Well, thank you for the very generous introduction, and good morning, everybody. Wake up, as they say here. <laughs> it's a menacing title uh, for, a, for a series of lectures. So glad to see all the students here. 
uh, you know, our life is about the students, so it's wonderful to see you here a little earlier than I guess that you would normally get up, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I'm a math teacher, so we're going to talk about math and we're going to have a little test at the end, so you better <laughs> get your papers out. So I, I've been here several times. I love being here with you. Of course, I live nearby. I live in Big Canyon, so that's one of the, it's the easiest commute that I could ever have in my day, and uh, we love being in, in Newport. We moved to Newport in 2017, and it's been just wonderful living here. It's a fantastic city, incredibly well run, uh, and, and we're really proud to be, to be you know, your neighbors here. So what I'd like to do today is to talk a little bit about what's happening at Chapman in the last um, you know, few years and where we are going. We just got the board to approve our five-year strategic plan, uh, so that's the number one job for a president is to set the vision for the institution, to create a plan for where you want to go, and then make sure the resources are allocated accordingly. And then, of course, you have people that make that happen. So the, what I'm going to describe today is very kind of uh, high-level description of what we are doing. Let me start with a couple of, uh, let's see. If, uh, you know, I'm, I'm used when I give my math lectures, I never use PowerPoint exactly for this reason. I always carry my markers, and as long as I have a white surface, could be the wall, uh, could be a, a whiteboard, I'm, I'm in good shape. So this actually is a picture from a, just a few days ago. Uh, we opened up the new Center for Dance. So for those of you who are not so familiar with Chapman, Chapman has uh, 11 different colleges and, uh, and schools. And one of our schools is the College of Performing Arts. And the Performing Perform Arts has a dance program who is now ranked 20 in the nation. So it's incredibly uh, um, difficult to get into that particular program. And we just opened a new spectacular $15 million facility that uh, it really is uh, one of the best that, that you can imagine. I mean, we, we did a big party and a tour, and it's a phenomenal facility, and it's named after Sandy Simon. Uh, Sandy and Ron Simon are also Newport Beach uh, uh, citizens and they live nearby and they're big supporters of the university and Ron is on our board of trustees. Uh, the, the, the facility is so nice that it won already his first review, even just finished, uh, his first award, uh, Preservation Design Award. You should know that Chapman is in a historical neighborhood of Orange. Orange is a very beautiful, very uh, quaint, I would say, um, old town. And most of the, the, the buildings there are protected there in the National Registry. So every construction we do is constrained by, by the desire of keeping it within those uh, historical uh, requirements. And I think we do a very good job, as a matter of fact, and that's what we've done here. This was a packing plant. And uh, we don't, I don't have the pictures here, but if you walked in before the renovation, it was just this huge, dilapidated packing plant uh, for, for uh, citrus, for oranges and, uh, and other citruses. And, uh, we did quite a bit of work and now it's an absolutely stunning facility, several floors of uh, studios for our students. We, at the same time, uh, we opened up in February, the, we, we started the building of a new uh, museum of art. It's called the, the Hilbert Museum of California Art. Uh, it's become a very success. We already have it, but now what we're doing, we're kind of doubling the, the footprint of the institute. So here you see me doing uh, manual labor, which is not my specialty, <laughs> so as my wife knows very well. And uh, we are, uh, it's a collection that is really dedicated to, to California art. So it's a very clear uh, vision for what the museum is going to be. It's been supported by Mark and Joanne Hilbert, and uh, it's, uh, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, collection. It's become one of the best attractions in Southern California. If, if you go to Yelp, we are really considered one of the, the best and most visited attractions. Before the pandemic, we had about 30,000 visitors a year. And so now we, we have so much art that we decided to double the space. What we did is we took the former dance studio, we moved the students into the new one, the one I just showed you, and now here we're building the new museum. We're going to open up within a year, and uh, it's going to be another fabulous celebration. We had our 24th annual Holocaust Art and Writing Contest. I don't know, does your high school participate in this? Do you know if uh, your high school participate in this contest? Anybody of you did? No. So, uh, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. 
Oh, fantastic. So yeah, it's a beautiful contest. It's, uh, it started 24 years ago. It's uh, writing and art. So there are really four awards. One is for short videos. One is for poetry. One is for an essay. And the other one is for a, a painting. And uh, we have now hundreds of schools participating all around the world. Uh, they started as a California thing and expanded as a US thing. And now we have institutions from Romania, uh, from Poland, from South Africa, from Australia. It's, a, it's really a, quite a phenomenal event. And uh, we do every year the, the celebration for the award winners. It's uh, founded on the ability that we have to connect our the students with survivors of the Holocaust. So they get a really personal experience and then they write or, or are inspired and they do some art inspired by that. Next year, we're gonna have a big celebration at 25th anniversary. Another big event that we had is uh, Nadia Murad. I don't know how many of you know who she is, but she got the Nobel Prize for Peace maybe five or six years ago. It's a really incredible story. Uh, she belongs to a very small minority, a religious minority in Iraq. They're called the Yazidi. And uh, it's a very ancient, ancient religion and um, very kind of secluded. And uh, after the fall of, you know, uh, in, in Iraq, you may remember when ISIS, the Islamic State, or ISIL, as somebody called it, uh, took over and was able to gain a lot of terrain. Well, they went to her village and uh, Kocho, and they essentially destroyed the village. They killed almost everybody there. They kidnapped her. They took her away. They raped her. They sold her as a slave among themselves. It was just an incredible story. And she was able eventually to escape. She escaped, and uh, she's a person of incredible strength and, and humanity. And she wrote a beautiful book, The Last Girl. If you have a chance to read it, I really suggest that you read it. Again, the title is The Last Girl by Nadia Murad. It's the story of her kidnapping and an eventual escape. It's a story that, despite the terrible topic, it's actually really heartwarming because it shows the ability of somebody to never give up in front of conditions that are really impossible for all of us to imagine. I, I'm always awed by when I, when I talk to her. She's a presidential fellow at Chapman, so she's with us very often. And uh, in fact, in, uh, in October, actually, I'm gonna go visit her in, in Iraq and she's gonna take me around the areas where all of these uh, things happen. But just a phenomenal person and she's an inspiration for our students. So she came and we had a beautiful dialogue. <clears throat> and then this, fantastic. I don't know how many of you watch the show The Price is Right. Any fan here? So one of our kids who is there won and won $20,000. This was a student only event and the video is just phenomenal. I don't have the video here for you, but every time I watch the video, it just lifts my spirit up. So she went there and there is an interesting story behind it. So she went and she won this $20,000 uh, award. You know, you have to put the stuff in the, I think it looks like a stupid game, but what she explained to her, Right, you know, you give you, you things, it's what is three dollars or five dollars. But what she said is really inspiring to me because she said, To prepare for the day, I watched all of the episodes and I went to the, the grocery store and I studied all the prices. So, even this that seems just like a game, she prepared like a professional, and that's kind of a lesson for all of us. Whatever we do, you prepare like a professional. This is a game, and yet she wanted to win. And she did what was necessary. Really great story, and she's such a fantastic young lady. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm gonna start with what we call the 12 gifts of Chapman. I'm gonna talk about our strategic plan in a few minutes, but uh, one of the pillars of our plan, of our strategic plan, is a uh, comprehensive campaign. That's the largest campaign we ever had at Chapman. It's a $500 million, half a billion dollars to support students, and the development of the institution. And so we have decided that every month we're gonna announce one gift, just like you have the 12 days of Christmas, we have the 12 gifts of Chapman. And so we started in February, and so I have already uh, only three of them because I February, March, and April. Uh, but now at every talk I give, I'm gonna show the entire list. So it's gonna be longer and longer. This is the first gift. We had the, the Burra School of Accounting and Finance, Jim and K. Burra, Jim is a 
is a member of the Board of Trustees and they gave a very generous donation for our new School of Accounting and Finance. I, I want people to please note the elegant president there because that's, you know, it took me a lot to get, uh, you know, cleaned up for that particular shot. So I, I need to gain something out of it. The second gift of Chapman, so that was in February, in March, the Ferrucci Institute for the Italian Experience. Uh, Mr. Ferrucci is there in the center and his family. And uh, uh, we have a really interesting institute that uh, has nothing to do with me, uh, even though I'm Italian. This was set up before me. Um, in fact, Mr. Musco was the person that first had the idea to support Italian studies at, uh, at Chapman. And uh, one of the things we do, for example, our student can go to study in Italy for free. We pay all of their expenses thanks to some of the donations, and we have a really very exciting kind of programs. And uh, I know Steve wanted to become a student for the next uh, two months so that he can go to Italy for free. <laughs> but then he told me that his wife likes to do shopping, so we're not going to be able to cover that. I don't think the, the, the support that they give us is, uh, can be used for that purpose. I think there are IRS limitations there. And then just a few days ago, we inaugurated the, the Panther Pantry. Uh, one of the things that is interesting, people think of, of Chapman many times as a school for rich kids, but in fact, we have a lot of students that struggle financially. And for some of them, even food is a challenge. And so now we have a, a, a pantry that students can access for free they, with, with their, just their card that they use to open their residence hall. And there is fresh food, fresh fruit, uh, vegetables, and utensils so they can even go and cook for themselves. And so that's also supported by some of our friends. But uh, let me get now to the, to the five-year plan. I'm going to go through quickly because uh, you, know, you don't need to see all the details, the excruciating details. But we really have, the, the, whenever we do a strategic plan, we try to have a limited number of priorities so that we can actually focus on those. So these are the five priorities. The first is the what could be a, the most obvious, which is the excellence of our academic programs, but many universities forget that that's really the bread and butter of what we do. And so we're going to focus on uh, really striving to hire transformational faculty for our students. We're going to expand our graduate programs. You, I'll show a couple of pictures, but we have a second campus. The, the one that most people are familiar with is in Orange, but we have a second campus in, in Irvine uh, near the Spectrum. And that's just for the health sciences. So that's something that's going to be the focus of a lot of attention. We, we're going to improve our organizational structure, uh, which will, it's a more boring aspect of the plan, but it's necessary because I think of Chapman sometimes as a very successful startup, even though we are we're founded in 1861. But what happened over the last 20 years, 25 years, has been really remarkable. And so we have grown extremely fast in a very aggressive fashion. And so I think it's important for us to make sure the structure is now adequate to support our ambitions. We have a few campus projects that I'm gonna describe briefly. And then finally, the comprehensive campaign of which I spoke. As I said, half a billion dollars is the target. We raised, when we launched it, we had raised 315. I think now we are at about 330. And I think it's, it's moving very well. The, the 12 gift of Chapman is this idea to keep really the, the, the momentum for the campaign. And we already have uh, a plan for a, an announcement in, in, uh, in May for another major gift for one of our colleges. That's going to be an anonymous gift, but very significant. So we'll continue on that. So let me talk briefly about academic success. Um, <clears throat> there are some sub-chapters here if you want. But, oh, look at this. I even had a little thought. Um, we're going to... Take a look at the rankings of which people like to poo-poo, but in fact, everybody then pays attention to them. Parents pay attention, students pay attention, faculty pay attention, and everybody says, ah, they really don't matter, but they do. So we look at that. We uh, are pursuing the status of HSI, Hispanic Serving Institution. Um, Chapman is in the, in, in the center of Orange, very uh, high Hispanic number of students. There, are some there is some tremendous talent there. And I think we want to be able to capture more of it. Um, we want to be one of the university of choices for the Latino community uh, that, that lives near, nearby. And uh, I think that too many times we see kids with great talent that eventually move somewhere else, and we'd like to be able to keep them here. We think that one of the things that universities do, and our friends at UCI certainly are doing this with great success, is to provide strength to the entire community 
through not only education, but then providing the workforce and keeping them here. And it's very difficult to attract people to our region because of the high cost. So, but those who are here, we'd like to see how we can keep them. I think we can do that. And then I, 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 one of the central points is this idea of German faculty, um, but I, I'm not going to get into any details. If there are questions, I'll be able to take them later on. Two very important numbers here that we'll work on is uh, undergraduate retention and graduation rate. Those are numbers that every student who applies to college should look at. When you apply to college, you want to make sure, you, you want to know what is their retention rate. Why is that important? Because retention tells you how happy students are after they've been there for a year. So it gives you a sense of whether you're going to be happy there. Now, everyone, of course, is a different individual, but that's a very important number. So our goal is to reach the 89 percentile there, where right now we have about 87 percent, which means that we are willing to, so we want to have 89 students out of 100 remain there after one year. The second very important, I'm sorry, 93, that's, I was reading the wrong line, 93 percent and now we are at 90. The second important line is the graduation rate, which means how many students graduate in six years. So whenever, and here I'm talking to the student, whenever you start shopping for a school, for a college, you, those numbers are available everywhere. The graduation rate is very important. So there are three numbers that we look at as professionals. The first are the admission number. They tell us how much people would like to come to Chapman. For example, this year we have a record application uh, pool. We have more than 16,000 students coming for 1,700 spots. So there is a ratio of 10 to 1. That number is important to us because it tells me how much do the people in the community want to come to Chapman. The number, the retention rate tells me, but how happy are they after they've been here for a year? So it's a kind of a quality control. And the graduation rate tells me how successful we have been in keeping the promise. If you come to Chapman, our commitment to you is that we're going to graduate you. So that number tells you how, we, how successful we have been. So these are very important numbers. So again, for the student, whenever you choose a university, those are numbers you have to look at. And my daughter is now a freshman at Chapman. And I remember when she was looking for schools, she was checking in all those numbers frantically. And everybody is, is doing that. So that's a very important uh, target that we have. And it's going to focus our resources. When you do a strategic plan, the targets that you have for yourself tells you where the money is going to go. Okay, so that's, that's an important part here. I spoke about uh, our desire to becoming an HSI, Hispanic Serving Institution. Right now we have about 18% of the students in our uh, institution are, are uh, of Hispanic uh, or Latinx, as we like to say. Uh, let's take a look at the rankings. Um, there are a few things that we are really incredibly strong. Our Arjo School of Business and Economics is now ranked number 72. And our goal is to bring in the top 50. We have been making it in. You put a goal, there is going to be resources associated. So we have one of the very best business schools in the nation. Uh, our law school, I was talking with somebody before about law schools, we are now uh, hovering around 100. We can do much better, and we should get in the top 70. Our College of uh, Film and Media Arts, I think, is probably the most famous of our uh, colleges, is now ranked number four in the nation. So I'm not asking them to go up because at that level it's really difficult to keep moving. But we were number seven only three years ago. So we did quite a, quite a good job in moving up and, and giving number four. And then we are now in the national categories for universities and our goal is to get to the top 100. Right now we are 121. Uh, but if you look at this, you see some interesting numbers. Those are the current rankings that when you put them together gives us the number 121. Graduation, we are already in the top 100. Graduation retention, those two numbers that I looked at before. And those are numbers that are very important to me because they really talk about our students. Uh, where we're lagging is the reputation. And that's not surprising because we are kind of a newcomer to, the, to this listing. We were, before becoming a national institution a few years ago, we were a, considered a regional one and in the West, and we were ranked at number five. So we were at the very top there. But then you jump from a smaller pool to a bigger pool where there are more fish, and some of them are much bigger. And so that's why our reputation is still lagging behind. And I think we can make some significant improvements there. I talked about the health sciences program. So we have a phenomenal campus at, uh, in, in Irvine, all dedicated to health sciences. So we have uh, a doctor in physical therapy. We have a master in physician assistant. 
We have a master in communication sciences disorder. Uh, so those are people studying the, the autistic spectrum. And we have a master in um, uh, family MFT, master in family therapy. And uh, those are very good programs. The, the PA program, which is really growing, has a selectivity that hovers between 5 and 8%. So out of 100 students who want to come, we can take between 5 or 8. It's really extremely hard to get in. It's one of the best in the nation. And it's actually, uh, as of now, students take the entire program for free if they're able to fit. There are, there are some very generous scholarships that Mr. Simon also funded. And so there is a significant core to students uh, that, that go through completely free in that program. We want to build that. We have some, oh, and we have a school of pharmacy. How could I forget that? And we have a school of pharmacy there. And um, so what we're going to do there, probably we're going to create a superstructure of a kind of health sciences program and then having various schools within, and that is going to increase efficiency. And uh, we, are we are building a new facility for students that we should be open uh, before the end of this academic year. And we have several research buildings that are going to be coming available as well. So here you see a little bit the map. Um, let's see, 9401 and 9501, these are the two main academic building, buildings. This one here is going to be our new student services. It's a fantastic facility. We're going to have a gym there as well for our students. And uh, this used to be a parking, uh, parking building. It's going to be taken down the parking because we acquire some land here to construct a really large parking area. And these are two research buildings. And then the, the map here is cut off, but we have another very large building here, uh, almost uh, as big as these two combined. So we still have room for expansion there, and that's going to be one of the areas of propulsion for the universe in the next uh, few years. Um, I think I'm going to probably skip the organizational part. I want to talk to you about the campus projects. Um, we have a new uh, vice president, or relatively new vice president of campus planning that really has taken to heart the idea of building, uh, of, of creating spaces that, that um, translate an academic vision into, into the, the way the space looks like. And, uh, you know, I, I was listening to before to you that uh, you want to build a new conference hall here, for example. And so the way the conference hall is going to be built and the way it's going to be embedded with the library it's all designed and it will be designed in a way to really create a seamless, if you want, transition from the place where you learn, the place where you, you, you read and do research and you are instructed by other people. And so the university is all thinking about how we put together all these spaces. So we have several projects that are going to be happening. Um, one of them, we just bought a new building in Anaheim, uh, about 850 beds. And so we're going to take a year to renovate it and make it available to our students for 424. Um, I don't think I'm lying if I say that Chavan is some of the very best residence hall that you can imagine. This particular facility, and another, there is another one nearby that we already own in, in the Anaheim, the Platinum Triangle, I would live there in a minute if I could. If I were younger, which I'm not, and if I were single, which I'm not, uh, but that's where I would live. <laughs> so there are lots of qualifications before I can move there. And if I were not a professor at Chapman. But it's, a, it's just spectacular. You know, you, you walk in and it's like a really high quality residence hall. You have a um, climbing wall, you have a gym, you have a yoga studios, you have a beautiful pool, you have jacuzzis, you have uh, cabanas so you can chill along the pool. You have common rooms with all the television sets. I haven't seen a math lab. That's the only thing that I'm worried about. <laughs> so I said, but okay, with all this stuff, when are you going to learn calculus? And, and it doesn't seem to have an answer for that. But it really, they're fantastic facilities. Um, and right now, we, we have one, and we, we just bought the second one. Um, this building that you see here, it's an old historical school. It's, it's called the Killifer School. Killifer was uh, the first uh, principal of that school. And um, this was the first school to integrate uh, before uh, in, in, this was mandated. And um, it's, a, it's a school that has been kind of languishing for many years. It's a property that the city of Orange had and was falling in disrepair. We acquired it. And now we're going to be spending $15 million to create there one of the strongest centers for quantum physics in the nation, 
We have an incredible group of quantum physicists, but they're spread out in different parts. So this is going to be completely renovated, and we're going to have uh, a really critical mass of scientists there. So this is going to be just a research building, but this research that involves our students as well, and I'm very, very excited. Of all the projects that Chapman has done, this really is the one where my heart is the most. Um, the other thing I want to illustrate is because this is a map that won't, tell, won't say much to you, but uh, because it doesn't say much to me either, I can't really realize which building is which. I think this is the Atalla Piazza. But anyway, in the center of our, if you come to campus, you will see a variety of beautiful, modern buildings. And then you will see one older single floor building. It's called the Mill Hall. It was very old building of the university. So, and that no historical significance. So that building is going to be taken down and we're going to build instead of a fabulous new facility all dedicated to our students. It's going to be a, a we call it a student uh, success center. And uh, I think that that's going to be really, uh, it's a major uh, expansion for the institution. It's an extremely expensive proposition, but we have been planning for it and now we are ready to, to get it started. We'll probably start the design in a year or so and uh, it's within our perimeter, so there is going to be no challenges really in having this construction approved. And I think it's going to transform the life of our students because right now, uh, like in many universities, you need uh, financial aid and you go to this office and then uh, you need tutoring and you go to this office and then uh, you have uh, some disability issues and you go to that office. And here it's all going to be centralized in this max center of campus. And finally, the comprehensive campaign. Um, I mentioned this before, so I'm not going to bore you too much with it, but the long-term goal is to bring uh, our institution to a $2 billion endowment mark. Right now we are at about 650, uh, depending on the day. Uh, I don't know if today we are at 648 or 653, but uh, that's where we are. <clears throat> People ask me often, why do you want to have a bigger endowment than you have? And I think everybody who works in university knows that the purpose of the endowment is really to provide support for student scholarships. That's our major goal. Uh, we want to be able to allow students uh, who deserve to be a Chapman to be there regardless of their financial ability. And we give scholarship, as you probably know, to about 82% of our students. So 82% of Chapman students have some form of scholarship. And the average scholarship is about 42% of the cost of tuition. But obviously, some student gets much more and some student gets less. I want to be able to grow that number, and that's why I want to grow our endowment. Um, the, the key for the, for the campaign are, uh, I would say, this component here. We need to strengthen the relationship we have with our alumni because it's interesting. Chapman right now, most of our gifts come from friends who are not necessarily being alumni of Chapman. Uh, when I think about uh, some of the larger gifts, they all come from people that for some reason became affectionate uh, about what we do and, be, and, and support what we do and share our vision, but uh, they're not necessarily alumni of the institution. So we wanna, we, I think we have a large reservoir there. And uh, as I said, the, the, the key is going to be growing our endowment. And then that's, uh, that's it. I'll, I'll stop here and I'll be happy to take any kind of question. I don't know how much time for questions we have, if any, but uh, thank you. Yeah, 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 we can, I, I can get in touch, but there, we have a website and people can access. So we make available not only the images that of the students submit, but also the, the winning essays. We have quite a collection, actually. Uh, if you, uh, at my home, I actually have one of the winning paintings because it was really spectacular from last year. They really touched me, and so I acquired that. But uh, yeah, we, we make that available. It's a great program because really, force a student to look at something they wouldn't usually be familiar with. And, uh, you know, actually we've been working with UCI quite a bit on, uh, on issues related to the Holocaust. The UCI has a very strong uh, uh, program in Jewish studies. So I, I was there with Gilman the other recently, one of these presentations. Robin?
Sure. By the way, there is a nice exhibit right now at JCC uh, if you, if for the next couple of weeks that uh, is open to the public and if you, uh, worth going to see. It. Yes? <laughs> can you guess? Nobody should give any suggest. You can't. So, so I was born in Milano, in Italy. Half of my family is from Sicily, so I have a little bit of the north and the south. And uh, I came to this country in 1978, and the accent never went away. <laughs> you would imagine, I'd say 78. But I remember, I have to tell you, I was a TA when I came to this country, you know, teaching assistant at the University of Maryland. So I, I landed August 9, and, uh, you know, so those are dates you don't forget, right, because my life changed when I came to this country. And uh, August 14, I had to teach my first calculus class, and I spoke no English. So calculus is already not a favorite of many students. Now you imagine you have this 23-year-old kid who walks in and can't speak English. My students were desperate. <laughs> so he, I memorized my classes. I prepared and I memorized everything because that was the only way I could, you know, I knew the math, obviously, but I couldn't speak. And it was okay until somebody like you would ask a question. And there was disaster. I, I hated to see the students asking. <laughs> and now I love it because I love to teach, so I actually enjoy the interaction. But there was, I remember, this <laughs> young blonde girl in the first row. And the students were kind of my age. I was 23. They was 18, 19, 20. And she was translating into very slow English what people were asking. So the guy would say something. I had no clue what the guy said. And this young lady in the first row would say, he wants to know. It was pitiful. And it was, you know, I, I, now I laugh and it's kind of nice to look back and I go home. But yeah, I remember I used to go home at night and I was completely drained. And then at the end of the semester, to make it even worse, the student get to grade the teacher. Terrible idea. So I look at my evaluation. They were all very nice. They said, he's a very nice guy. He really knows his stuff but we don't understand the word that he says, and he doesn't understand the word that we say. So that's kind of what happens sometimes in this large institution. You take these kids, and you know, I was a PhD student, I was very good in math, but uh, difficult. So that's where the, and the accent always stay there. I eventually learn how to speak, and I understand what you're saying, but even though the movies, I still struggle. Can you believe that after 40 years, if I watch a movie, and people talk fast, or I don't see, then because maybe they're having a dialogue like this, I still struggle understanding what people say. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> see, that's a supportive student. You're like, see, the support in the first row. Thanks. <laughs> So this is an interesting story because Chapman really didn't talk about diversity until seven or eight years ago very much. And then when I was my previous job, so when I was chancellor, which kind of corresponded to a provost plus position, we started with what we call the diversity project. And we really put everybody together to get ideas of where we were moving. And then two years ago, we hired a fabulous guy uh, Reg Stewart, who is our new uh, vice president for DEI. And so we have plans to not only to grow the numbers, but also to provide the support for their success. And I have to say that in many areas, our success is already very good. I think it, we, with the Latino students, things are moving in a really good direction, partly because the county provides additional support in terms of the environment in which they have. You know, the university may not be so Hispanic, but once they walk out, there is an entire Hispanic community, so they don't feel the same kind of stress that you feel going in a place that is completely alien. One of our focuses is really to grow the internal services that provide support so that those two key numbers, retention and graduation, are good. And so Reg has already hired, uh, but his first hire was actually uh, the director of uh, uh, Black Student Success. Uh, and now then he hires somebody for our uh, Latino students, 
and, uh, and now is, uh, is hiring somebody for the um, Asian Pacific group. So we certainly are very uh, paying a lot of attention to what's happening because we want to be, as I said before, we want to be a university that everybody here considers a possible place to go. And then, of course, lots of different reasons you end up going somewhere else. But I want people to have Chapman as one of the names that they look at. And then they decide, well, you know, for what I want to do, actually, I'd rather go to UCI because they have a program here that I'm interested in. That's fine. Or I don't want to be in California anymore. I want to go to, to the East Coast. But I want us to be in everybody's mind. And I think, as you pointed out, in an increasingly diverse community, we need to be able to be attractive to all of this. So thank you for that. Yes? Music? Yeah. yeah, we actually have a very good music program. Uh, it dep I mean, there are lots of different areas, of course. Um, we have a very good music technology program uh, that is kind of seems to be very exciting to young students. Um, we traditionally always had a very strong voice program, uh, both choral as well as opera. Uh, we have a very strong uh, string program. So there are some really peaks in which we do very well, and we have one of the best facilities. Yeah, you, you should. Be, you know, I'll I'll can give you my card, and I can give you some connections if you want. Sure, absolutely. I'm sorry, you would. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. It's one actually of the, the sub, you know, subsets when we talk about student success. And you're absolutely right. And actually, that's something that we all struggle. I think every institution, I'm sure UCI is facing similar problems. You, you mentioned the right word, anxiety. Our students tend to be way more anxious than I remember when I started here in 1978. Uh, and um, I don't know what the reasons are. In a way, it doesn't really matter what the reasons are, but the problem is that a significant number of kids, not just at Chapman, every university in this country now go to school and they're already taking medication. So the problem that then arises, I mean, I don't have to tell you I say this for the public because you obviously know this better than me, but the problem is that these kids take medication uh, and for anxiety, for depression, for attention deficit disorder, and usually they have mom they make sure they take it when they need to take it at the right time, the right doses. Then they go to college, they're on their own, bombarded by all this new stuff, the excitement. They fall off the medication, they forget to take it, and then they have a crisis. Then, as you know, when you have a crisis, it's much harder to fix. So it's a, it's a huge problem. We are spending increasing number of dollars every year. We have increased the number of hours that we support our students. We do referral programs to uh, outside psychiatrists, but it's, it's a struggle, and I, I don't, no, if you do know of an institution that has really cracked the code there, because everybody, I talk to many of my friends, presidents elsewhere, it's a big problem for all of us. Yes? The Orange Campus is recently constrained. Mm -hmm. So are there plans to you know, expand in additional communities around uh, other than where you already are? No, we, we are planning, so the plan, this is a five year plan, but I put it as within a larger plan for 15 years. And the idea is that within 15 years, I would like the university to reach a target of 12,000 students and not to go above that. Now, of course, somebody else is gonna be pressing after me and they may want to change the plan, but uh, I think that it's important for Chapman not to grow the numbers. So the 12,000, my desire would be to see 10,500 in Orange and 1,500 in uh, Irvine. And I don't want to grow anymore because one of the things that makes us special is the ability of students to be in my office and talk to me. Is the ability of students to be in the office of their dean, of their professor. For example, now when I'm finished here, I'm going to go to work. At 10.30, I have a student. He's not a student of mine, but he has some issues. And so he's coming to my office and we meet. And you don't have that if you start growing too much. So this is a, I mean, from all of you who are business people know what this is a significant challenge because businesses succeed and by constantly growing. 
So now we are saying, no, we are not going to be constantly growing. We're going to cap our source of revenue. And, you know, a, a car maker that says we don't want to sell more than so many cars is finding himself in trouble. So this requires a different financial strategy, and that's why the strategy of growing the endowment, and that's why I've asked all of our donors to focus on the endowment so that then we have the resources that we can draw from there that are not coming from constant increase in tuition. So it's a very good question you have, and I think this is one of those strategic decisions. And I think it's very important. If we grow, we eventually going to lose what makes Chapman really special. And I don't want to lose that. Well, please join me in thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You know, a quick story. Last year, the Hispanic Chamber of Orange County hosted Dr. Strupa, Chancellor Gilman, and President of Cal State Fullerton, Fran Vergy. Let me tell you, uh, these, these leaders have such big visions for their schools and for their students. Uh, it's incredible the work that they do and what an asset to Orange County. So thank you. Thank you. So before we close, uh, some closing remarks from uh, Steve. Great, great talk. Uh, I hear, I was interested in that, uh, the quantum physics program. I, there's a rumor going around that you're going to turn the circle in orange into a big linear accelerator. Is that true? No? Black hole. Black hole. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah. I, one of our members has a, a bar over there. I better tell him he might fall into the black hole. No, that's great. I, you know, I wish I was their age so that I could be considered to, you know, possibly if I had the right GPA and all that to go to Chapman because it uh, sounds exciting with all the things you're doing there. So I'll just quickly end. Um, if you uh, didn't get enough of the Newport Beach Chamber of Commerce this morning, we've got plenty of stuff coming up that you can join us for. In uh, next week, Wednesday, April 12th, we have our Inspire Women in Business Luncheon. We're going to be at uh, Capitol Grill. Great place to have lunch over there by South Coast Plaza. And our speaker is Deborah Peter. She's a business coach and consultant and a visionary. So I'll be interested to see what visions she has. Our networking luncheon this uh, month also is going to, again, be in Costa Mesa. Um, these are members of ours. We just don't go to Costa Mesa willy-nilly. At Morton's, so lunch at Morton's, you can't beat that. That'll be uh, Wednesday, April 19th. Um, any of you folks, uh, seniors, uh, part of our scholarship awards dinner? Any? No? Well, we're having our scholarship awards dinner, 60th annual uh, scholarship awards dinner, April 26th. It's going to be at the Lido House Hotel for the very first time. And we're excited to um, honor the top 35 um, graduating uh, seniors from Harbor, Corona del Mar, and Sage Hill Schools. So uh, that should be a, a lot of fun. And uh, for the older folks in the room here, over 21, we're having our mixer at Time in Costa Mesa. I don't, maybe this is the Costa Mesa chamber. I don't know. But uh, they're a new member of ours. Time Night Club. We're going to do a joint mixer with the Costa Mesa chamber. Um, the, the best part about it is open bar and free food. So there's going to be hundreds of people there. So definitely join us. That's April 27th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's a half hour later than we normally do. We, usually it's at 5.30. For our young professionals, we'll be at the Winery Restaurant, finally back into Newport Beach on Coast Highway, May 3rd, and we'll have a wine tasting experience there for them. And next month at Wake of Newport, May 4th, will be our Orange County District Attorney, Todd Spitzer, will be speaking to us. Excuse me. And in uh, June, we have uh, Congresswoman um, Katie Porter. So hopefully you can join us for that. I know you guys are probably going to be taking tests or whatever at the end of June. But uh, if you can, if Sheridan will let you out of school, we'll love to have you over here. So have a great uh, rest of your week. Thank you for coming. Grab a bagel on the way out. we got a ton of them left over. Take care.